Hello, physics class. Hope you're getting settled in. This first part that we're going to look at is a review from the end of your geometry class. So we're going to go through the process of solving a right triangle. If I have already gone over this yesterday, then you're going to need to fast forward right on by. But just in case I didn't get a chance to, or if you need to hear it again, here it is again. Okay, so just to remind you, this is a right triangle. It has a right angle. It's got two acute angles. It has a hypotenuse. When you were in geometry towards the end, if you remember, or even if you don't remember, we began to talk about three ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. These ratios are true for every right triangle, and if they have the number of the same number of degrees in the acute angle, then those ratios will be the same universally. So they're very, very useful when you have a larger triangle or a smaller triangle that has the same number of degrees in the acute angles to be able to find missing sides and missing pieces. So when we solve a right triangle, we're going to be using our trig ratios and also the Pythagorean theorem to find our missing pieces. Our sine ratio, if you remember, is the side opposite of the angle divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. Hypotenuse is always the longest side. The other sides are the legs. The side opposite is all the way across the triangle. The side adjacent is the one that makes that angle with the hypotenuse. So if you know the number, the length of this side divided by this one, that would be B over C. That would be our ratio. That would be our fraction that goes with that. And we have this little, can't call it an acronym, but this little trick to help you remember it. The way they go, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you're looking off of angle alpha, we call this angle alpha. And this is angle theta up here. But if we're working off of angle alpha, the cosine of angle alpha would be A over C, the side adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of alpha would be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay, like I said, this is a review. If we're going off of the other angle, angle theta in this case, theta circle with a little mark that goes through it, the Greek letter, we would then need to figure out again which is the opposite side and which is the adjacent side. Hypotenuse is the same, but if we're going off angle theta, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent. So you have the sine of theta is A over C. The cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, would be B over C. And the tangent would be A over B. You have that handy dandy poster in the front of the room to help you remember as you go. That will probably be covered during your test, although you can still put it on your note sheet if you so choose. So when we solve a right triangle, to remind you, you need to take the given information and find the missing parts. So we're going to try to find side A, which is across from angle A. We're going to be trying to find side B, which is across from angle B opposite of angle B, and we're going to be trying to find alpha. You might say, well, alpha is going to be the easiest one. Yes, it is, but just so that I don't confuse you, I'm going to say we're going to base things off of our given angle, angle 41. You're going to consider where the opposite 
and the adjacent and the hypotenuse are on the triangle. So 27 will be the hypotenuse, longest side. B is going to be the side opposite of the 41 degrees. So we can say that the sine of 41 degrees is B, the opposite, over 27, the hypotenuse. That's when we need to use your calculator. Okay. To remind you or to make sure that you understand, when we are working in degrees, you have to make sure that the mode on your calculator is set to degrees. Radians is something completely different. In this physics class, we're only going to be using degrees, so always check your calculator to make sure it is set that way. So we have degrees here. The sine of 41 degrees equals B over 27. So I need to find the sine, here's my sine button, of 41 degrees. This ratio is stored in your calculator. It will give it to you as a decimal. You need to round that so we can use it if you were going to um, write that as a step. However, what you can do is take the sine of 41 degrees there and we're going to multiply it by 27 because I can multiply both sides of this equation by 27. So I've got my sine of 41 times 27. And I get 17.71 blah blah blah. So we're going, I'm going to say for our rule, for our purposes, we're just going to round our answers to the tenths, please. So this means that B is about 17.7 .7 centimeters. Okay. So B is about 17.7 .7 centimeters using that logic. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Our cosine is our adjacent over the hypotenuse. If you wanted to at this point, you could use Pythagorean theorem, but I'm going to say it's just a little bit faster and easier to use the trig and use adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what you're going to do is for solving for A, the cosine of 41 is A over 27. So in order to put it in the calculator in one step, you could multiply both sides by 27. And you could say 27 times the cosine of 41 degrees. And we get about 20.4 there. So 20.4 is your measurement of this side. And then our angle alpha, remember a triangle has 180 degrees. So since a triangle, the interior angles are 180 degrees and 90 of it's already gone over here. So we have 90 left for these two angles. So the quickest way to get that answer is to take 90 minus 41 degrees. That gives you 49 degrees. So our angle alpha is 49 degrees. So solving the right triangle, you're finding all the parts that you don't know. Okay. If you know two sides and you don't know an angle, Then we can start off simply by finding the missing side by using Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so 19 squared plus 15 squared, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. 19 squared plus 15 squared equals 586. Use the square root in your calculator. For those that don't remember, second of x squared is square root, 586. 
and we get 24.2, so we've got about 24.2 for our C value. All right, then we need to find alpha and we need to find theta. To find alpha, we're going to have to use trig. I'm going to go back to the ones that we already have been given, the 15 and the 19. It's not a rounded answer, so I kind of like to go back to the original for this. 15 is on the opposite side from angle alpha, and 19 is on the adjacent side. So we're thinking about our trig ratios. Sine, so, SOH, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. No, I want opposite over adjacent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I want to choose tangent to be my number here, my ratio here, 15 over 19. The tangent of alpha is 15 over 19. In order to find out the angle that goes with it, this is when we need to use our inverse button on the calculator. So we're going to use second of tangent of 15 divided by 19. And that is going to give us our number of degrees, which is about 38.2 degrees, or 38.3 degrees. by doing the inverse tangent. Now here you notice there's another step. What I could do if I wanted to is I could take 15 divided by 19 first, find out that that's about 0.7895, and then I could do the inverse tangent of that number. It's the same thing if you do the decimal first, or if you just go straight to putting in the fraction. Either way, I'm getting about 38 Point three degrees here. So this is our measure of angle alpha. To get the measure of angle theta, once again, these two have to add up to 90, so I can just subtract 38.3 from 90. We have 51.7. Okay, so there are my, um, my trig ratios there. Okay, We've solved the triangle. We found all the missing pieces. You might be thinking, well, what are we going to use this for? Well, this is just our pre-information for our chapter on vectors. We're going to need to use this to find the direction and the magnitude of our answers when we're putting together uh, different types of numbers that are not necessarily just forward and backwards. Uh, we kind of looked at forward vectors and things like that in the last chapter for setups, but we're going to have to do angles, so this is going to be super important in this chapter. Okay, so here's another triangle for us to take a look at. We're given the 52 degrees, we're given 27 as this side. We need to find our missing x, we need to find our r, we need to find our theta. I'm going to start by saying, okay, I've got my 52 degrees. I want to use my 27. My 27 is the opposite side. My unknown R is my hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent. I would suggest every time you want to do these, label your opposite, your adjacent, and your hypotenuse so you can find them. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So here we have 27 over X. Common mistake here is for people to think I'll just multiply 27 by both sides, but then that would leave 1 over x, so please be careful with that. What we need to do is we need to multiply both sides by x, because when I do that, the x's cancel out over here, and then divide both sides by the tangent of 52, because that will give us something that's solvable. 27 divided by tangent of 52. It's not 27 times tangent of 52. You've got to be careful on that. Okay, so I'm doing 27 divided by the tangent of 52 degrees. And we should get 21.1. 
If you're not getting 21.1, remember your mode should be on uh, the correct mode. And if you pull a calculator from the box, you just never know what it's going to be set to. So always check your mode to make sure it's in the right mode before you start doing these. Everybody should by this point have your own calculator. But if you did not ever purchase one, then you're going to be using one randomly from the box and you need to remember to check all these things. If you're using your own, you know what you've got it set for. Those who are in Algebra 3, you know that um, at some point you're going to be using the radian measures so you'll, you on your personal calculator will be going back and forth. So make sure you always have your mode set in the correct mode. All right, so I've got the tangent of 52 degrees. To find the sine, I'm going to use the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is going to help me find my r. Same thing, my r is in the denominator, so I need to multiply it by both sides. Then divide by the sine of 52. And so you're going to put in 27 divided by the sine of 52. And you get about 34.3. So your R, your hypotenuse is 34.3. Since we know the theta, that's going to be the easiest thing to find. Simply take 90 minus 52, and that'll give you your 38. Okay, so that is our quick trigonometry review. If I have not given this to you yet, or if you haven't done it yet, you absolutely must have this worksheet completed by Monday, and this one I will be grading for correctness. You can't do a good job for the whole rest of the course if you have not mastered the ability to solve right triangles. So you have to get these right. You are able to work together. You are able to ask each other for help. You are able to ask me for help. You can keep doing this thing until you're right, but I want you to make sure that you are able to find the missing pieces for these triangles. You need to find this side and this side and the angle here. You need to find this side and the two angles here. So we've done some examples. You can watch it over and over and over again if you want to but you need to make sure that you can find the missing pieces of right triangles in order to be able to do the rest of this course. Over here, this one, just as a little hint, you will need Pythagorean theorem, but this is the hypotenuse. This is the standalone, this is C. All right, so that is the trig review. I am going to now work on the other parts of this section. Okay, so we're going to jump right into section 4.1. When you finish with this, you will need to do your very best at um, getting started on your practice problems as far as you can get. I'm just going to talk a little bit about Represent, representing vectors. Vectors we talked about before, we know they look like an arrow. It's got an arrow in one end to show direction. Uh, the other side of it is called the tail. The arrow part is called the tip. So you need to make sure that you know which part is which. We are going to be dealing with um, positives and negatives. We're going to be dealing with uh, an angle, three-dimensional. You can imagine we could go into the three-dimensional. We're just going to be dealing with like one-dimensional, two-dimensional. Uh, the three-dimensional you'll leave for a later course, but let's move on to these things.
Okay, in order for vectors to be equal, they have to be not only pointing in the same direction, they also have to have the same magnitude. They also do have to be pointed in the same direction. So for example, A equals B, they're the same magnitude, five meters. They're the same exact direction. However, D and A are not in the same direction are not in the same magnitude, but they are the same direction. Okay, let's see how much battery I've got left here. Okay, cool. C is not equal to A and B. They're all five meters, but C is not in the same direction, so it's not an equal vector. Equal vectors have to be the same magnitude, which is the number in the unit, and the same direction. That's going to be an important thing for you to know a little bit later on. I am going to jump into the idea of adding vectors. When you add vectors together that make an angle, they are called resultant vectors. Okay, A resultant vector is found when you add or subtract two vectors. They probably won't be the same direction as the original vectors. Although they could be, they don't uh, have to be, unless they happen to be heading the same direction, but that's a whole different thing. But when we're adding two vectors that go in different directions, the, the result is going to be different. This paragraph gives the verbal description. I'm going to show you an example very shortly. Uh, you're going to Find these results by taking a vector and then placing it and then placing the next vector attached to the former one and going from the beginning of the first one, from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Let's look at an example. I want to add the vectors 6 meters north. To 8 meters east, north, south, west, east. So hopefully you can remember that from there. So 6 meters north, I'm going to take my arrow, and here I'm doing this on graph paper, so it is actually six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six north, and I want to add that by taking my other arrow and going from there and going 8 east. So my result is from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last vector. So notice when I did that, tail of the first to tip of the last. If I want to find out how much that is, how far it is, this is a right triangle. Here comes our triangles that I was just talking about. I need to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find the magnitude of the result. So my magnitude of my result is 10 meters. It does not matter what order you add vectors in. Just like regular addition is commutative, so is vector addition. And we'll make that come home with the lab we're going to do on Monday. But just so you see here, I could do my 8 east first and add it to my 6 north. And what we notice is that my resultant vector, even if I didn't know the numbers, equal vectors are the same magnitude and the same direction. So this one is exactly the same magnitude and direction as this one, even though I did the 8 first this time and then the 6. Same math to find the magnitude 10 meters. Okay. So after I find that, I need to use my trig to find my number of degrees. Okay, so I want to find theta. 8 over here is 6. I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to say that the tangent 
of theta is 8 over 6. I'm going to use second tangent 8 divided by 6. I have 53.1 degrees. So my theta is 53.1 degrees. However, these are going to help us with the direction. I can't just say 53.1 degrees. That would imply that it came from the positive x-axis. I need to use my triangle to get how this works. I'm going north and I'm going east. I'm going 53.1 degrees east of north. If I'm following along here, I go north first and then east. So I'm modifying north with east. So it's east of north. I'm modifying north with east. So I'm going 53.1 degrees east of north. For this one, my triangle looks a little different. I'm looking for alpha. So I can use tangent of alpha is 6 over 8 this time. My inverse tangent. My inverse tangent. Second tangent of 6 over 8. I get a different number. I get 30. 6.9. Okay, wait a minute. You said they were equal. Yes, they are equal vectors. They're pointing the same direction, but there's two different ways of showing this direction. Over here, I'm going east and north, so I'm modifying east with a north. So I'm going north of east. 36.9 degrees north of east is the same as 53.1 degrees east of north. On Monday, we're going to do a lab. I'm going to bring home the concept of it being okay to add in any direction. But for right now, I want you to work on finishing those trig worksheets. For Monday, work together. Use your resources. Talk to the teacher in the room. She's very good at it and she can help you with those. So bless you. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday.